I'm gonna be honest with you. For years, Old McDonald was my least favorite course at Band of Dunes, and it wasn't even close. Every time I played it, it was in the winter, so the prevailing winds were going the opposite way, and by the time I got halfway through the round, I was just getting beat up. There was a long stretch of holes between like nine and 12 that I just struggled with. I thought it was hard. I didn't think it was fair, and I really just didn't understand the course, and I just didn't enjoy playing it that much. But here's the thing. Over the course of my last couple trips to Bandon, I've gotten to play Old McDonald a few more times and I've gotten to play it in proper conditions, where the wind wasn't super brutal and also where I was playing with the prevailing winds the way the course was designed. And when I got to play the course that way, I found myself really enjoying it and wanting to go play it again and wanting to unlock more of its mysteries. So today I'm just going to share some of my thoughts on Old McDonald. We're going to talk about why it's the most misunderstood course at Bandon Dunes and look at some reasons why I think it's great why I think it's unique, not just at the resort, but in the entire world of golf, and talk about why I think you should make sure you make an effort to play it when you go to the resort. So Old McDonald was built in 2010 and was designed by architect Tom Doak. It was the fourth course at the resort, and it was designed to be an homage to C.B. McDonald. So C.B. McDonald was a golden age architect who was famous for building some of the best courses in all of golf, like Mid-Ocean Club, Chicago Golf Club, National Golf Links of America, and a number of others. So one of the things McDonald was most famous for were template holes, and these are pretty much exactly what they sound like. They are templates of golf courses that McDonald and others have used across their designs. So examples might be a Biarritz hole, which is a par 3 with a big swale in the middle of the green. Another one might be a Cape hole, where the fairway is at a 45 degree angle from the tee box, and so you basically get to bite off however much you want to chew on your drive. And if you don't bite off enough, then you're going to end up in a hazard. There's the short hole, which is essentially exactly what it sounds like. It's a short par three. There's the Redan hole, which is where the green complex is elevated on the right-hand side and slopes down to the left, and there's a bunker guarding it in front. And you see many of these templates across some of the very best golf courses in the entire world. The old course at St. Andrews, NGLA, Fishers Island, Chicago Golf Club, you name it. They all featured these different templates. And so what Tom Doak was tasked to do was to create an homage to C.B. McDonald and include many of these templates in the design. And what's so interesting about this is many of those template holes that I just mentioned are at courses that are very private and they're very hard to get on and play. So to have it at a public resort where anybody can come and experience these types of designs is really interesting. But here's the thing about Old McDonald. It's unlike any other course at Bandon Dunes. Most of the other courses all have spectacular ocean views. You don't see the ocean from most of the course at Old Mac. Most of the courses have some sort of routing where you're kind of weaving in and out of dunes or trees. Most of Old McDonald is pretty open and it's pretty flat. So once you get to the top of three fairway, you can pretty much see most of the course. So for a lot of people, that takes away some of the mystery of it. And it also means the course is very exposed and can be very difficult to play. So that was part of the reason that I didn't like it, is it was so exposed and the wind and the elements really kind of beat me up. So every time I played it, I just didn't enjoy it. And I wasn't able to respect the architecture for what it was, as I was just merely holding on for dear life and trying to survive. But I want to kind of run through the course pretty quickly and talk about some of the things that I think are unique about it that I really like that uh, might be reasons why you should go back and give it a second look if you don't like it or why you should make sure you play it if you're going out to Bandon Dunes. So the first two and a half holes I think are really interesting. The opening hole is exactly what you want an opening hole to be. It's not overly long. You've got a big wide fairway. You've got a giant sand dune up on the left. You can see the iconic ghost tree in the distance. It's a great opening hole and it gives you a shot to make an easy par as you're getting going. But then it gets harder. You've got the Eden template, which basically is a green that has a very difficult bunker on the front right, which is called the Strath Bunker, and then you've got another deep bunker all the way around the left. This green can be really, really difficult to hold. So I've seen a lot of triple bogeys here. I've made a lot of triple bogeys here. And so that's one reason why you've got this difficult par three right off the bat that could kind of make you say, I'm not sure how I feel about this. But the whole vibe on the right-hand side of the big sand dune that separates it from the rest of the course provides this kind of cool amphitheater setting and kind of sets the stage for what's to come. You've got something to look forward to because you can't really see what's going on in the rest of the course. And so I like that opening to the round. And then you get to number three, which is called the Sahara template. It was modeled after a blind shot at Royal St. George's in England. And it's one of the coolest shots at Bandon Dunes. So you're standing on the tee box and you're looking at this giant sand dune in front of you 
and then you've got a big tree that is sticking up and you're like, I have no idea what to do. I don't know where to hit this. But you talk to your caddy, it's only like 150 yards to clear the ridge. It's not as imposing as you think, but the more you play it, the more you start to understand where you need to position yourself in order to have the optimal tee shot. You can go way farther right than you think you can, and you can even go a little bit farther left than you think as well. You just might find yourself in some scrub and a, a difficult angle to get to the green. But once you get over that hump, You've got this rumply fairway on the side of a hill that's playing to a downhill green, and it's quite simply one of the most unique golf holes I have ever played, and it's fun playing Old McDonald just for a hole like that. Four is a very challenging par four, and when you play it in the winter, you could go like driver three wood, three wood <laughs> if the wind is up. And that was one of the holes that I didn't love at first, but once you play it downwind, all of a sudden it becomes a completely different golf hole and you can kind of understand what it is. The fifth is the short template. It has one of the biggest greens at Bandon Dunes. It's wild, it's up and down. If you get a certain pin position, it might be your best chance to make a hole in one at the entire resort, and it's just a fun golf hole. Any short par three that gives you a chance to make a hole in one in my book is a lot of fun and some of the tee boxes are quite elevated so it makes it that much more dramatic and interesting. From here you're at the far end of the course and you start working your way over towards the ocean. Once you get to seven you've got a flat tee shot and then you're looking directly uphill at a very steep fairway in a green that's perched up at basically the highest point on the golf course. It's a unique hole again it's unlike any others on the property and if you don't bring the right amount of club you're going to find yourself watching your ball roll all the way back down the fairway, which, well, that's what happened to me recently. But that didn't mean I didn't enjoy the shot. When you get up there, you got the best halfway house on the property, which has just spectacular views of the beach and the coastline, and that's a special moment and a special spot. The eighth is the Buritz Hole, and that's one of the most special templates in golf. Most people don't get the opportunity to play one of these templates, but when you do, it's a really cool experience. So basically it's a par three with a green that's flat and then it has a giant swale in the middle of it that can be anywhere from three, four, five feet deep and then green back on the other side. So the one at Banded Dunes is relatively benign when you compare it to like the ninth at Yale Golf Club, which is probably the most dramatic example of a Brits hole, but uh, getting to play it is pretty special. It's pretty cool. And that's just one more example of a unique hole at Old McDonald. All right, nine through 12, this is the part of the course that kind of killed it for me in my early rounds playing there. They're all kind of in the flats. There wasn't a whole lot to differentiate themselves from other holes. If you're playing in the opposite winds, it can make these holes just a slog, especially 10, and especially holding the greens on 11 and 12. So 11 is the template of the road hole, the 17th hole at St. Andrews. And what you're going to find is you're gonna find a very deep bunker, and then you're gonna find the back of the green completely shaved off. So when you're playing downwind, holding that green can be next to impossible. This is one of those places where you have to trust everyone that says, you want to put your wedges away abandoned, you want to putt everything, because chances are, if you're trying to chip this, you're going to hit it fat, you're going to go long, it's going to come back, to, uh, it's going to be a mess. So just putt it, get it up there. But now that I've played it a few more times, I actually kind of like the challenge. I think it's a really unique green. I think Old McDonald has the most unique greens of any of the courses at Bandon Dunes, and they're greens you just don't generally see built anymore. They are modeled after these templates, they're modeled after Golden Age Golf, and so you're seeing something that you just never see. And that doesn't mean it's not as good, it just means it's different. And I think for the typical golfer, it can take playing them and seeing them a few times to understand them, to know what to do, and to really just enjoy them. Because often the first time you see them, you're like, this is a lot, and I don't know how I feel about it. You get to 14 and 15, which have some wonderful elevation changes. 14 has a perch green and then 15 tee box. You hit back down into the fairway and then back up to an elevated green, which can be really tricky to judge the distance of, but it is a very good par five. And that takes you back to the halfway house where you can get another transfusion or beer or, you know, Gatorade, whatever you do. 16 is an excellent example of an Alps hole. And so basically there's a ridge that goes across the fairway that blocks off the view of the green. The farther left you are, the more blocked off the view is. If you can hold a ball all the way on the right-hand side of the fairway and hit it deep enough, then you're gonna get an angle, you're gonna get a look into the green. But for most people, this is going to be a blind shot. And it's the kind of thing that, again, you just don't see being built these days. A lot of people aren't going to like blind shots, but the more you play the course, the more you start to understand 
understand the fun of it, the design of it, and it's pretty cool. Not to mention, they have the signature bell that you will see across so many courses in Scotland, where you walk off the green, you ring the bell to ensure that uh, the people behind you know that the green is clear and they can hit their shots, which is pretty cool. 17 and 18, then finish back on the other side of the dune where holes one, two, and three started. And so it brings you kind of into a different section of the course. 17 is a great strategic par five that you can play in a number of different ways depending on the line you wanna take. And 18 is the famous punch bowl template, which is one of my favorite green complexes on the course. So all that to say, be able to play these template holes, it's something special. There are some points in the course where it can feel a little long, a little daunting, a little draining, but when you take a pause and you look at the architecture and you look at some of the unique features of those long, hard, challenging holes, uh, I think you're gonna find that they are something special and that the more you play it, the more fun you're going to have with it. Old McDonald was voted the second most fun course in the country for a reason. It is fun. The greens are massive, the elements are in full force, and you get to play templates that are usually only found on historic private golf courses. So for that reason, Old McDonald is very unique and very special, not just at Banded Dunes, but in the world of golf. So it's taken me many rounds to understand this. The first three times I played it, I was not a fan. But the last two, the more I play it, the more fun I have, the more I look forward to playing it, and the more excited I am to go play it on the next round. So. All that to say, if you've played it and not liked it, give it another chance. If you haven't been to Banded Dunes and you're trying to figure out your schedule, I would do yourself a favor and I would make sure that it is part of your itinerary. I also recommend you play Old McDonald first on any trip to the resort. The reason for this is because it is pretty open, it is pretty fun, and it doesn't have the views of the other courses. So the views for many people, that is the wow factor. That's part of the fun of going to Bandon Dunes. And playing Old Mac first kind of like saves that. Like if you play Pacific, if you play Sheep Ranch, if you play Bandon Dunes before you play Old Mac, you might be a little bit disappointed. You might be like, huh, this, you know, this doesn't have some of the magic. It doesn't have some of the views. But when you go out there and you play it as your first round, you know that you still have a whole lot to look forward to. So for all those reasons, I think Old McDonald's a little misunderstood. I think it's a lot better than people give it credit for, but I also understand why so many people that I talk to that have sent me emails that have commented on my videos say it is their favorite course at Bandon Dunes. So go play it, drop a comment, let me know what you think about Old McDonald. I would love to hear it, and we'll see you on the next video. Take it easy.